terms of skill and proficiency you mentioned, uh, mentioned they are not there. But I think Singapore's position is clear. We are able to support and collaborate with them to expand. We do not see ourselves as a Singapore industry alone. I think we should see Semicon as a whole Asia, the whole regional uh, you know, uh, uh, industry as a whole. So we work very closely with our uh, sister trade association called SEMI. We go to countries like Malaysia in Penang. Recently, they have an event in Vietnam where they also bring local companies over their site. Our so-called system and ecosystem that we have developed over the years in Singapore, we could easily expand to those countries and help them bring out the industry too. So I think it's a very close collaboration and most important business opportunity for our guys. Yeah. Does the actual model have to change from just-in-time supply chain management to something more uh, fluid and more uh, longer term because you, you see the rise of predictive technology and data algorithms and I personally was surprised that all of this technology did not uh, give us an early warning signal about how profound these supply chain disruptions could be during the COVID era, during the uh, Ukraine war as well. Do you think that is changing? Do you think the model is changing and the early warning signals are changing as well? Absolutely. So the, what, one thing the pandemic has taught us, or specifically the industry, is that we need to have a stronger and more resilient supply chain. Mm. So that is the buzzword these days, uh, you know, when I talk about to my industry leaders and even the agencies, what is our supply chain resiliency? Right. It is something we are trying to understand now. We're something that we're trying to even measure. We're working closely with uh, companies like McKinsey and even uh, the trade industries to try to understand how can we measure the resiliency of our supply chain. Now, most importantly, uh, you are right. Just in time is not the way to go moving forward. We have seen how that has caused the auto industry, uh, you know, the, the entire problem that they face with the chip shortages. I think uh, many of these industry players today, they are trying to get closer to the semicon. They're even hiring semicon experts these days into their industry, their sectors, to really to get to know the processes of the semicon. So I think we are seeing that very major shift among sectors that rely on semicon. But within semicon, I think there's also a strong shift in trying to understand more about our complex uh, supply chain, not just within the region, but I think globally too. Yeah. You know,